Welcome to the Gardner Foundation Community Grant Program Grant Seeker Workshop for 2024. This presentation will be made by Danielle Griffin, the Philanthropic Services Manager at FRRR, and Ashley Rosewarn of Gardner Foundation. So firstly, I'd like to acknowledge um, the First Nations people of Australia and the traditional custodians of country Australia and their connections to land, sea and community. Um, Ash and I are both coming to you from um, Boonarung country today in Melbourne and um, we'd like to also pay our respect to all the different um, country that you're coming from throughout Victoria. Um, I'm going to hand over to Ash in the moment and she's going to talk to you about the Gardner Foundation. I'll give you a little bit of information on FRR. We'll talk about the program and then we'll talk about um, just some skills for actually applying for grants, some particularly FRR grants, just what we're looking for and how to make your grants stronger. Yep, perfect. Thanks, Danielle. Um, uh, my name is Ashley Rose, one of the people in community development project coordinator with Gardner. Um, I've been with Gardner. Um, this will be my seventh year this year. So I've worked on with the FRRR for the past five, six years. So we've seen some great outcomes in this grants program. So we're looking forward to seeing new ideas and new projects as well. So just a little bit about Gardner is that in the late 1990s, the decision was made to deregulate the Australian dairy industry, which generated significant industry change. The Gardner Foundation was created with $62 million in funding from the sale of assets, including milk brands Big M, Rev and Skinny Milk, as part of deregulation to the dairy industry. Gardner proactively invests over $6 million each year in dairy industry and dairy community-based projects. Those funds are derived from the income generated by the corpus. Since Gardner's inception in 2000, the foundation has invested over 90 million for the benefit of the industry, the aim to maximize the benefit to all sectors of the Victorian dairy industry and Victorian dairy communities. Our strategic plan empowers our great dairy people, inspires change that benefits the industry, strengthens community, accelerates innovation and growth and sustains investment in the dairy's prosperity. So, um, we are investing in change that benefits everyone in Victorian dairy, helping people to make places where they want to live, work and invest. Gardner has been working in partnership with the Foundation of Rural, Regional and Renewal to deliver the Community Grants Program for the past 22 years. The aim of the Community Grants Program is to strengthen Victorian dairy communities by helping build their capacity to deal with local issues and enhance existing community infrastructure the community grants have funded a diverse range of projects, including initiatives to support education and training, health and social well-being, or amenities of a public setting. We're strengthening dairy commu communities by offering up to $5,000 in grant funding for community groups with a total investment of $120,000 across the state this year. And they're the three regions yeah, yeah. that we cover. Thanks, Ash. Um, as Ash said, this is a 22-year-old partnership, so um, I'm hoping you've actually heard of this community grant program before. It, it really is embedded in those Victorian dairy communities, and I think if you went around your area, you might see some old plaques, and there's definitely, um, you know, a, a lot of community benefit that's come from this. The $5,000 grants and um, the people in your communities do amazing things. Um FRR, um, just, just as background, um, we are the only national foundation um, that's specifically focused on ensuring social and economic strength um, across Australia. Um, and we work with government, philanthropy, um, and obviously business um, really to, you know, meet those community purposes and, and make those investments in community. Um, some of the other programs that FRRR has are obviously Gardner um, Community Foundation, a Strengthening Rural Communities um, grant program, uh, helping regional communities prepare for drought. Um, coming up is, is Telstra. Um, there's a youth innovation program. 
and also um, ANZ Seeds of Renewal, Nutrient Ag Solutions and In a Good Place. So um, we really want to talk to you about Gardener today, but, you know, keep in mind if this isn't the right program for you that FRRR can also support your other objectives through other programs. As Ash said, um, we have 120,000 in grant funds available um, for communities. Um, when we talk about dairy and communities, we're really talking about Southwest, Northern Victoria and Gippsland and, and where we see um, a connection to dairy through the industry, um, farming, um, often employment is, is really central to that. Um, and, and obviously the farming communities that often are surrounding um, small locations. Um, the program's open now and it closes on the 21st of March. Um, we'll be announcing funds in late June. So that means that your programs um, or projects need to be commencing around July and then be finishing up in around June 2025. So um, they're the kind of projects that you should be looking to put forward to us. Um, we can fund a wide range of community projects through this program. Um, really looking to deliver benefit to the people living in those communities. So one thing we really look for is the broad community benefit. Um, but it can be anything. We know that a lot of your organisations are really critical. And so um, we're happy to support the work you do and to make you more effective and sustainable in that program delivery. Um, we're also happy to look at, you know, supporting you with your employees and volunteers. And um, we know the digital connection and capability is really, really important um, to make you more efficient. Communities being stronger socially and or economically, um, we're really talking about those programs that help people um, to engage um, and connect. Um, we know how important mental health is for many um, people in communities um, and also, you know, those events that bring people to your location um, and help um, greater investment come about that then has a wonderful kind of roll-on effect of um, increasing community benefit. Environmental sustainability is, is really critical, I think, in everything we do now. So, um, and particularly in enhancing the environment around your community. Um, making communities more culturally vibrant. So looking at what else you might be able to offer from, a, from an arts or a cultural perspective, um, education and training to, to enhance the outcomes for your community. And that, that does include, um, you know, looking at the educational opportunities at schools, but also community programs. And finally, improving health and social wellbeing. Um, you know, this can be physical or mental um, health and wellbeing. So, Pretty much anything that's going in your community that can benefit um, people living there, we're very interested in looking at. Um, and here's a few projects, and I think it's always really handy to have a look at what other people have done in the past. Um, very often there's memorial halls or community halls um, that community groups are running, and we understand that increasingly, you know, there's things need to be fixed, um, and sometimes you have bigger projects as well. With this one at Gagare, um, their development group wanted to install heaters. Um, you know, really important because when people come together, this one was the community quilting group, but we also looked and it was regularly used by many members of the community. And so um, putting in really good quality heaters meant that people would continue to use that facility and actually be able to engage and do all the different activities they need to do. Um, you know, and we, we also, we really appreciate that, you know, it's, you just can't put a blow heater in the corner. Um, so looking at you actually putting really quality improvements is, is really valuable for us to see. Um, an example of community and environmental health and social wellbeing was the community garden at Camperdown and District Community House. Um, this was quite a large project here with a total cost of 27,000, um, but the grant itself was only just under 3,000. So, um, you know, we get grants range or applications ranging from 1,500 to the 5,000 that's available. And we're very happy to be contributing to larger grants. It's you, I can see you. 
Excuse me, could you mute yourself? Oh, sorry. Sorry, sorry. It's okay. Thank you. Um, <laughs> I don't know how to do that. Sorry, you're still, you're still, um, I can okay. still, thank you. Um, so, and once again, this is um, really understanding the need for this garden um, when we understand what some of the issues are in the community and, and the broader benefit that the garden can bring in helping people address a, a range of um, issues. Um, this is another one, which is a great one in Gippsland, which was the State Coal Mine Rescue Station Arts. Um, they do a broad amount of work with youth um, and the whole community and offering different activities or artistic activities for people to participate in. Um, and this one was particularly focused at disengaged youth. Um, and as you can see, we've, we've got the image there of people coming together and doing clay work. Um, and we're really interested to understand what's important to you, what's going to work for you. Um, we're not trying to be prescriptive about what activity will, will make a difference. Um, we just want you to tell us what and why. When we talked earlier about economically stronger communities, um, the Kaihambra Tastes and Tunes Street Festival is a great example. This was held um, in 2023. And as we all know, um, the COVID was really difficult on small communities from an economic and a social perspective. Um, and this, this overwhelmed them with how successful it was, how many people it had attracted um, to the event. And obviously they had several supporters there and really specifically they needed the funding here for the entertainment of the festival. Um, finally, um, this one's to a school. And as we said, we do um, support schools here. What we're looking at is programs that are above and beyond what the school would, would typically be able to provide. And through the Incredi Girls program in Welshpool, um, this was really targeting, you know, the quite small cohort of female students there to make sure they were getting attention and getting some opportunities to promote their um, engagement with science and technology, engineering and mathematics. But what we really saw with this project was it was much bigger. Um, it actually... Um, helped the whole school to get together, um, including the male students. And there was a lot of work done in regards to engaging the community in the learning that was going on. Really big thinking was that, you know, kids are growing up in a small town and often don't all have the opportunities to be exposed to different, um, different worlds outside their own. And so this was really broadening that, not just for the girls, but for the whole school and starting to build that community engagement as well with children at a young age. So once again, a really clever um, program that had broad community benefits. Um, it's always important um, when you're doing your grant application to consider the eligibility. Um, you must be a not-for-profit. Um, and this project must not be for private or commercial gain. So um, if you are a commercial business that's doing something for community, you will need to be auspiced by a not-for-profit organisation. Um, you'll need to show us an ABN or be incorporated as a not-for-profit um, and, and kind of demonstrate that there's a clear public benefit. We are not able to do scholarships through this program. So it is for broad community benefit. Once again, um, we do look at where the projects or the applicants are coming from. So those dairy community locations are really critical um, about the eligibility of this program. And um, look, I think it's important to understand that we, we are really looking at those smaller communities under 5,000 because we understand that it can be more difficult for you to fundraise with a smaller population and access funds. So, you know, we're definitely looking favourably and understanding that you might be a small community, but you've got a lot um, that you can do um, with funding through this program. So what we can't fund um, are the core costs of your operations or your organisation, but we will fund anything that is related to the project. So if a facility is ha having to operate, um, you know, after hours to run a program, we're very um, 
okay with understanding what the additional utilities and internet costs might be that are associated with that. Um, but we, we can't just fund the electricity for the organisation for the period of the project overall. So it's just making sure that what you're asking for is specific to the project. Um, prizes, gifts, trophies or awards aren't eligible to be funded. However, if you're doing an event, what we suggest is, is you ask us for funding for other parts of the event and anything um, such as a trophy, um, either look for sponsorship or, or look for another option in regards to how you might fund that. As I said, these projects need to be starting around July 2024. So we won't fund projects that are already going on now. Um, though if you've got a stage two or a stage three that's going to be happening later in the year, we're very happy to consider that. Um, we also, just to let you know, we're, we do make sure that there's not a duplication of services, that you're not doing something that's already in the town. Um, so just be conscious of what else is going on in your community. Um, we aren't supporting political parties or religious promotion or, or lobbying um, for any particular causes, um, and we can't support sporting activity. So this is not eligible um, through the ATO as a charitable activity. Um, we often do fund sporting organisations that are doing work with the community, so if you've got an application coming through, um, equipment um, and facilities that are specifically used by the sports club members um, will be considered ineligible. But if you've got programs that are um, reaching more broadly than, than the actual club itself, we're definitely interested in, in under, looking at it and understanding because we know that um, many of you are central to your community's operation. Okay, tips for see, successfully seeking grants. So, look, um, people do kind of, you know, think grants, how difficult are they? And I think they overthink it sometimes. Um, as someone that reads a lot of grants, it's really about just making, making it really clear what your idea is and why you're doing it. So it's that are you solving an issue or building on a great opportunity for your community? Um, and, and really me being able to say, okay, there's, you know, they, they know their community, they're thinking about them and they've also got support. Um, something that I'll be reiterating right throughout this is that idea of showing us who in your community is behind this, um, you know, who's going to benefit. So why is it important for your community and how will, will they benefit? Um, great if you can kind of say, if this doesn't happen, do you know what I mean? You know, this, this is what will happen. This is why it's important. It's always really good for you um, when you're actually developing projects yourself to kind of prioritise by saying what's the most important, what will happen, what will, you know, what happens if you don't do this, I think. And any research, statistics, local economic or social impact, I think, Renee, your idea of a garden, it's important to understand why it didn't work in the past and what you might be doing differently. So really feel like you, you're talking to a friend about why this is kind of exciting, but also keep it simple and straightforward. Um, here's a great example. I'm not going to read this out because, as I said, we'll share these slides with you, but it is that um, try and be really specific about this is the reason why, this is the evidence, you know, we have a community plan or this has happened, um, we've met with people. So any kind of detail you can provide that, rather than something quite vague that, you know, we heard this, we think it's a good idea, be really clear in, and strong in your why. Um, who's involved is great to know too. Sometimes if you're reading a um, project, you're going, I wonder if they've talked to the local hardware. I wonder if, um, you know, there's any local farmers that, are, you know, might have equipment they could help in, in you know, bigger infrastructure work. Um, who's volunteering um, and who the beneficiaries are. So, so if you could just kind of think broadly about the amount of people that could get involved in the project and that could benefit um, and, and let us know. Skills and experience are really important as well. So, um, you know, sometimes if it's a complex project, it's good to know if one of your volunteers does work at council or um, is a town planner or, or isn't, you know, um, 
know, has some experience in digital work that makes us think, oh, okay, this is really good. They've got the actual skills and knowledge there, um, you know, and, and you're not needing to hire anyone else to bring those to the project. Um, how, when, and where. So as when you're telling a story, like anything, it's really important to kind of understand, you know, we're going to have a festival. Um, how are you going to do it? You know, have you got a committee that's going to arrange it? Where's the other funding coming from? When is it going to happen? What, what kind of timing? And we understand sometimes it might be dependent on this funding. So just plan as if you're going to get the funding um, for your best times. And you can always say, well, we might do it in this time. You know, we're looking at this at the moment. You can always provide a few examples of timing but um, and, and kind of those contingencies that you might have to consider. Um, it's really helping us to see how you're thinking. And obviously where is always important. Um, it's really important for us to understand if you do, you're doing a project <clears throat> on private land, um, that there's no benefit to that private landowner um, and also that you have an arrangement with that private landowner that means that after six months or a year, they're not going to say, oh, we're not going to give you access to this land anymore. So, you know, if you are in a building that's, that's rent, you know, you're renting through someone, we really want to see a long-term lease for anything like that where you might be getting work done there. Um, so really... Just, just those background details that will help us understand the where and particularly, I guess, you know, the why of the where. Why, why is that a great location to have your, um, to do an environmental project or, or to have an event? Um, just so we aren't kind of going, oh, I wonder if, you know, is that a riparian zone for environment or is the council involved? Do you need permits? So there is quite a lot of detail, I suppose, to consider. Um, and if it's not, kind of written out and it can be just dot points if it's not there we wonder um, and it can be the difference between us going well this is a strong project because we know exactly what's going on this one we're not sure about and if we get a lot of applications we don't always have the time to kind of give you a call and just ask those extra questions so um, more you know just the dot points um, is is better than less so do give us as much detail as is, is actually needed to actually run the project. Um, once again, this is a really good one to reference in regards to how you might put that information down in regards to um, who your beneficiaries are, when it's going to happen, um, you know, what stage of the project this is actually going to be and what's going to be funded at this stage. Okay, FRRR has a budget template in the application. Um, that template allows you obviously to put in the expenditure um, that you're wanting. And sometimes it might be that you have a bigger project. And so you're putting the expenditure of the whole project. For the items that you're wanting funding for, we need you to get um, quotes for anything that has a cost of greater than a thousand. Now, you know, if you're getting office equipment, very happy for you to go onto Officeworks and, you know, type up a, you know, pretend to put through an order and just screen print that so we have an indication. Um, I do understand that, you know, you've got five weeks left to kind of write this grant. You might get quotes back from your, um, your tradespeople or, or even someone that might be, be speaking at your event. Try and get an estimate so at least the money that you're requesting um, makes sense to us. Do you know what I mean? It's like if someone says, oh, we're going to get three trestle tables and we need $5,000, I'd be going with very expensive trestle tables. Um, so it's it's just making it so we go, okay, that makes sense. You know, we've based it on something that someone's done in the past or but if you can just, you know, um, for a community garden, often going to Bunnings and, and working out exactly how much something might cost, um, that's the best way to kind of indicate the prices and why you're asking for those funds. Also, it's really valuable for us to understand um, who else might be funding the project. Um, if you're actually as an organisation also contributing to the, to the project or you've got donations or sponsors from around town, um, understanding that you've got other partners and supporters 
doesn't mean we say, oh, they've already got funding. It says, oh, look how much support they've got locally for what they're doing. Um, we can contribute to actually making that happen. So all of this tells the story. Um, also, really, you know, those volunteer hours that um, everyone contributes to make something happen. Um, there is a calculation, I think it's around $43 now um, for the value of a volunteer hour. And we ask you to put that down because we say, you know, these projects are worth thousands of dollars because of the amount of local volunteering that contributes to them. So I think I've gone through the who, what, why, just really those basic rules of, you know, to plan your application and, and start now. Um, make sure you read the guidelines. Um, follow all the instructions in the application. Um, give yourself time. Letters of support, I can't emphasise enough. A letter of support really is the difference between a, a good application and a great application because as soon as I see that, you know, the council's supporting you or the local Lions Club or, or just someone else that you're saying is going to benefit from this or that you've been involved with in the past and they've taken the time to, you know, write up a quick letter of support um, for this project, it helps us kind of understand that this is community led and that's really important for us to understand. Um, look, sometimes that can be an email too. So if it, it, it's too complex, just have a look at that. There are um, There is a link on our website to an example of a letter of support in case you're not sure what to write. So have a look at that um, just to help you along. This, I think, is a really great page to maybe print out for yourself and, and stick up there if you're doing lots of grant applications. Just, just reminding you to use clear, simple language. Um, really assume that we don't know anything about your organisation. So if you're using any acronyms or those kind of things, spell it out. Um, read the question and answer the question. Sometimes you might find questions seem to be repeating themselves. So just read the question in. If it says, you know, who will benefit in your community, just write who will benefit in your community. You don't have to get too complicated about your community there. Um, avoid the technical language. Use evidence where possible. Um, you don't have to attach it all. You can put links in or just make a reference to reports if, you, if you're wanting, um, if you've actually got that evidence as a part of why you're doing this project. Um, and be really specific on how this money is being spent so we're not going on one. Which part of the project is this actual going to? Um, and use facts, not opinions. So um, I think um, I heard that kind of stuff. We really want this is, you know, necessary because of this. I'm just letting you know that... Um, as program manager, I'm one of the main initial assessors. And then we work very closely with um, Gardner Foundation um, to really look at the projects and understand what we think is strong. We really look at equity. So, you know, we are looking to um, put funding into each of those communities. Um, and, and, you know, very rarely do we fund more than one project per community. Um, so, you know, there might be an opportunity for you to partner with someone else if you've got something in common. Um, once again, really ask for what you need. So if it's a $1,500 project, ask for $1,500. Um, and, um, yeah, just tell us, tell us why. Um, at the end of the day, the FRR CEO, or in some cases the FRR board, are the final governance and approval. So, um, you know, we we do, there's no bias in this grant program. You know, um, gardeners are going to say, oh, that we really like this region or we've got lots of people in this region. We, we're really looking for the strongest projects. Um, but we are really interested to understand how you are a dairying community and what it means to be living in a dairying community. So we can look at those stories and understand what is making you stronger. So finally, the winner is your community. Um, as we said, this grant will be announced towards the end of June um, and we will let both successful and unsuccessful applicants um, know the outcome. Um, if you are successful, um, you know, we, we invite you to promote your project. Often the, the, 
you know, the local media will contact you and those kind of things. Um, one thing with the grant application, you'll notice now we do ask you to put a photo in um, as a part of the application. Um, so we will we'll use that if you're successful. Um, so please ensure that whoever's in those photos is happy to be a part of any promotion that might go on if you're successful. Um, we understand it can be hard to, to maybe take a photo of a project that's going to happen. And so in that instance, we ask you to just take a picture of what your organisation, the people who work in your organisation um, look like. You know, it might be another event that you've done, but it gives us a sense of what kind of community organisation you are. If you're not successful, we're really happy to chat to you um, and talk to you about why your application wasn't as strong as others and give you feedback and support you in potentially looking at other applications opportunities with FRRR. Now, um, I do recommend if you ever want to look at other grant seeker resources, um, please use the FRRR website. We've been doing this for a long time and um, you do have to report on this grant after 12 matters, 12 months. So there's some tips there in regards to actually measuring success. We recommend if you, you know, you get a grant, you you kind of, as soon as you understand that kind of go, okay, how are we going to tell this story at the end? Start taking pictures of your project at the start. You know, there's nothing better than a before and after. Um, so just, you know, making those little notes at the start means that when you report at the end, it, it's great. And I do think that, you know, maybe this is the first time you're going for a grant with FRRR or with any organisation. And if you've been successful in past grants and you're able to do things, you start, start to have a track record. And um, so I think the better you can tell that story, um, you know, you, you just increase your chances and your opportunities to continue going forward. Um, just as a last reminder, um, please diarise that we do close on the 21st of March um, at 5 p.m. Um, and that's daylight savings time still in Victoria. Um, if you have any issues on the day, please call FRRR. We're very happy. We're very um, understanding. We understand that, you know, power's gone down recently and that can be challenging. So, you know, um, don't get too concerned, but please contact us if you've got having any issues in the lead up to the grant that are going to prevent you not being able to put your application through. Um, I do advise you to subscribe to FRRR's monthly newsletter um, so you can stay on touch of what other opportunities might be available. Um, look at our sorting hat of grants because that helps you work out where your opportunities might be and play with our grant seeker resources to see how you might strengthen um, your opportunities going forward. And so that's the end of our workshop. I will flip for some more questions in a minute, but I um, just want to thank Ash again because it is pretty exciting to be working with Gardner Foundation for 22 years. Um, and I think the, the stories we have to tell about this program just continue to show what an important program it is dedicated to your communities.